a fruit that India gave to the world, a fruit autochthonous to India, which is known all over the world, where everybody thinks it actually comes from South America, and whose name is actually Arabic. I'm Dr. Kurush Firoz Dalal, archaeologist and culinary anthropologist, and today we're going to talk about the most interesting fruit in the world, loved by more people than any other fruit. I'm talking about none other than the banana. The name of the banana actually comes from the Arabic word banan. The oldest story as far as the banana is concerned is told to us very apocryphally and perhaps not true, but amazing nonetheless. The first European to really enjoy this fruit was none other than Alexander the Great when he came to India and he was completely enamored by it. One story says it was Alexander that tried to take the fruit back to Europe and took it as far as the Mediterranean shores, especially its eastern shores. But it was definitely the Arabs who were responsible for moving the banana with them and the banana took to the rest of the world thanks to the name banan, which basically means finger in Arabic. Uh, bananas were originally much smaller, much slimmer, and we've been pumping them up through selective breeding for the last thousand years, if not more. India has been home to more than 700 varieties of bananas. While bananas still grow in many parts of the Northeast, many different types of bananas still have seeds in them. Bananas were taken to South America and they grew very, very well in the Caribbean and South America. And it was the seedless variety which became very, very popular. In fact, it is the Cavendish variety of bananas grown in South America and Central America which has come full circle back to India, the land of bananas, and the most popular banana sold in India today is now the Cavendish variety. And this is really sad because there's some absolutely phenomenal bananas in India. Bananas have also given rise to this very, very interesting political construct called the Banana Republic. Few people know that when America became very, very health conscious and fruits became a very, very important part of the North American diet. The United Fruit Company realized that the banana was one of the few fruits which could be grown in tropical areas and brought to the United States while it was still ripening. It also came in its own packaging, so it did not require any extra packaging and this packaging was completely eco-friendly and biodegradable. So this made the cultivation of bananas in South America something that the United Fruit Company looked forward to. But how were they going to convince people to let them grow bananas in large quantities? At the time when this was taking place, South America was just rising up from the chaos of colonialism. And young republics in South America were looking at all those things that modern nations had, one of them being infrastructure. The United Banana Company and other companies which followed in its tracks offered to build massive railways and therefore bring in huge infrastructure to these regions in concession for which they wanted to be given a couple of hundred meters or a couple of hundred yards on both sides of the railway tracks. They built these railways for the South American governments on loans for which they brought in experts from the United States, engineers and such like. Then levied, of course, uh, percentages on these loans grew bananas alongside these railway tracks, used the railways primarily to ship their bananas out to the ports on the coast. And these countries realized that they were now up to their necks in debt. And the only worthwhile thing that was being shipped out was bananas. This was a kind of infrastructure that they really didn't need. And now their hard-earned cash was going into paying off the loans to build it. Thus the term banana republics.